Fundamental Accounting Principles To better understand financial statements, it is helpful to look at some fundamental accounting principles embodied in the GAAP. These principles determine the manner of recording, measuring, and reporting company transactions. As you will see, the practical application of these principles requires professional judgment, which can result in considerable differences in financial statements. The Assumption of Arm's Length Transactions Accounting is based on the recording of economic transactions that can be quantified in dollar amounts. It assumes that the parties to a transaction are economically rational and are free to act independently of each other. To illustrate, let's assume that you are preparing a personal balance sheet for a bank loan on which you must list all your assets. You are including your BMW 325 as an asset. You bought the car a few months ago from your father for $3,000 when the retail price of the car was $15,000. You got a good deal. However, the price you paid, which would be the number recorded on your balance sheet, was not the market price. Since you did not purchase the BMW in an arm's length transaction, your balance sheet would not reflect the true value of the asset. The Cost Principle Book Value The book value is the net value of an asset or liability recorded on the financial statements, normally reflects historical cost. Generally, the value of an asset that is recorded on a company's books reflects its historical cost. The historical cost is assumed to represent the fair market value of the item at the time it was acquired and is recorded as the book value. Over time, it is unlikely that an asset's book value will be equal to its market value because market value tends to change over time. The major exception to this principle is marketable securities such as stock of another company which is recorded at their current market value. It is important to note that accounting statements are records of past performance. They are based on historical costs, not on current market prices or values. Accounting statements translate the business's past performance into dollars and cents, which helps management and investors better understand how the business has performed in the past. The Realization Principle Under the Realization Principle, Revenue is recognized only when the sale is virtually completed and the exchange value for the goods or services can be reliably determined. As a practical matter, this means that most revenues are recognized at the time of sale whether or not cash is actually received. At this time, if a firm sells to its customers on credit and account receivables is recorded, the firm receives the cash only when the customer actually makes the payment. Although the realization principle concept seems straightforward, there can be considerable ambiguity in its interpretation. For example, should revenues be recognized when goods are ordered, when they are shipped, or when payment is received from the customer? The matching principle. Accounting tries to match revenue on the income statement with the expenses used to generate the revenue. In practice, this principle means that revenue is first recognized according to the realization principle and then matched with the cost associated with producing the revenue. For example, if we manufacture a product and sell it on credit or accounts receivables, the revenue is recognized at the time of sale. The expenses associated with manufacturing the product, expenditures for raw material, labors, equipment, and facilities will be recognized at the same time. Notice that the actual cash outflows for expenses may not occur at the same time the expenses are recognized. It should be clear that the figures on the income statement more than likely will not correspond to the actual cash inflows and outflows during the period. And last, you have the going concern assumption. The going concern assumption is the assumption that a business will remain in operation for the foreseeable future. This assumption underlies much of what is done in accounting. For example, suppose that Kmart had $4.6 billion of inventory on its balance sheet, representing what the firm actually paid for the inventory in arm's length transactions. If we assume that Kmart is a going concern, 
The balance sheet figure is a reasonable number because in the normal course of business, we expect Kmart to be able to sell the goods for its costs plus some reasonable markup. However, suppose Kmart declares bankruptcy and is forced by its creditors to liquidate its assets. If this happens, Kmart is no longer a going concern. What will the inventory be worth then? We cannot be certain, but 50 cents on the dollar might be a high figure. The going concern assumption allows the accountant to record assets at cost rather than their value in a liquidation sale, which is usually much less. You can see that the fundamental accounting principles just discussed leave considerable professional discretion to accountants in the preparation of financial statements. As a result, financial statements can do differ because of honest differences in professional judgments. Of course, there are limits on honest professional differences, and at some point, an accountant's choices can cross the line and result in cooking the books.